everyone, Rebecca here for the next episode of the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. Mondays are a day when I share a blog post by Mr. Money Mustache on my channel. He is a very popular financial independence retire early blogger and I love sharing his message here so that we can discuss down in the comment section below what we think about his take on the financial independence retire early movement. Today's blog post is from May 25th, 2013. This one's titled, Which Part of the Money Wave Do You Surf? One of the silliest objections I run across to the mustachian lifestyle is the concept that it is extreme. Mr. Money Mustache needs to go out and buy more shit right now because otherwise he's depriving himself and his family too. You only live once and what good is money if you don't spend it on yourself? You can't take it with you. You might imagine my fist starting to clench at such a statement, but in reality, I admire the sentiment behind it. Yes, we really should live life to its fullest, and I'm doing my best to do so right now. My disagreement is only regarding the detailed tactics on how to do it. So today, we're going to take a trip to the beach for our lesson. You see, I spent this past winter in Hawaii, and pretty much every day, I jumped in the ocean to play in the big waves of Kailua's beaches. Although I haven't learned to surf yet, I still did my best to catch rides on the waves, a stand-up paddleboard, on boogie boards, and even with just my own frantically swimming arms. Sometimes you get your timing wrong and the wave just passes under you or crashes on your head. But in certain magical situations, you can wedge yourself into the sloped wall of water and just stick there, roaring diagonally across the shoreline for free until you are deposited way up in the shallows next to all the sandcastles. What an amazing feeling. Eventually, the Hawaiian vacation ended and the Mr. Money Mustache family had to pack up our stuff and return to Colorado. But the feeling of the waves came home with me and I have noticed that the same pattern comes up in our financial lives as well. Your life and mine and, and the very different lives of our spendy pants opponents. Some people just can't seem to get ahead. They get up early every weekday and get to work on time every day. On the second and fourth Friday of each month, they collapse into the couch having earned a much needed paycheck. Despite the 80 hours invested, they won't be keeping any of that money because it's already all spoken for. Student loan payments, car payments, credit card interest, a mortgage or rent, and any number of additional bills. They could stop the work, but the bills would keep coming, leaving them rapidly swamped. Other people have a sensible cushion and are not so afraid of losing their jobs, but still could not imagine retiring early. Where would the money come from? And they enjoy the luxuries they have earned at this point in their lives. Best to keep working so as to afford them. Finally, there are the wealthy people. Many of you are among them and some have even retired early. They've got a pretty cushy life. It's full of the American middle class all you can eat buffet with just a few of the fatty edges of the steak trimmed off. We don't even have to go to work to sustain this lifestyle and we can go anywhere or do or buy whatever we want at any time. Considered on a practical level, it is as complete a freedom as any generation of humans has ever known. The funny part is that in theory, all three of these groups could be living at exactly the same level of spending. The only difference is the portion of the wave upon which they are surfing. The struggling person has debt. It's an absolutely destructive and useless thing to bring into your life unless done on an investment basis with a calculator firmly in hand. Debt used to finance luxuries just creates a backwards current on your life. Suddenly you must paddle fiercely just to stay in one place. Just a few feet forward on the exact same wave rides the debt-free person. Everything they earn can be applied to spending, which means they have much more power to buy things when compared to the indebted person. A few feet ahead of the debt-free surfer is the investor. This person doesn't subscribe to the statement, money is no good unless you spend it. Quite the opposite. Their belief is money does you no good if you just go out and spend it. Because the investor has put most of her past earnings to work, there is now an unstoppable wave behind her pushing her along whether she decides to work or not. Any additional work will push her forward very quickly and spending in moderation won't knock her off the wave. All three of them may be moving along at the same speed, buying the same stuff and living the same lifestyle and they're only a few feet apart. They can converse freely over the roar of the water because the difference between wealth and poverty is only really changing a few spending habits until you amass a sufficient stash. But the level of struggling and cubicle sitting and clock punching and money stressing is completely different just because of how they have positioned themselves. 
The lesson is therefore to get yourself to the front of that wave. Whether you value the simple living philosophy of Mr. Money Mustache or your goal is a Walmart sized garage full of Bentleys, the only efficient way to get there is on the front of the wave. If you do your shopping too early in life, like the 99% tend to do, you're screwed. Instead, why not lie down and paddle a bit first? You'll look better when you eventually stand up anyway, sporting a well pumped set of frugality muscles. All right, y'all, I loved this one too because it really does illustrate an important part of the way that society views money nowadays. I think some reason why people assume that the FIRE movement is so impossible to attain is because they can't imagine being in the FIRE movement with the amount of debt that they currently have. And y'all, debt is such a normalized concept in our society today that people don't even think twice about swiping a credit card to get something they need from one paycheck to the next because they ran out of money too quickly, right? And y'all, I speak from personal experience. The whole reason I started this YouTube channel was because years ago, I got started down the rabbit hole of personal finance. I had a debt problem and I wanted to stop having a debt problem. And the farther I went down this personal finance rabbit hole, the more the wheels started turning and the more I realized that it's not just about getting out of debt. The goal here is financial freedom. And not only is that the goal, but it is possible when you position yourself in such a way to attain it. Yes, becoming debt free is still one of my goals for sure. And the way Mr. Money Mustache describes it in this article is absolutely true. Here I am trying to reduce my expenses and invest as much as possible, but the debt that I do have remaining is acting like that riptide that is pulling me backwards in the wrong direction. So getting rid of the debt is still a key portion of reaching financial freedom, but I am going about paying it off a little more differently than some others might recommend. I have my calculator firmly in hand, and I do believe that for me in my own situation, it makes more sense for me to continue investing while I am working on paying off my debt simultaneously. For some, it may be best to stop investing and focus on debt first, but that is not how I am choosing to run my own ship here. But the important takeaway from the article that I hope people who are new to the FIRE movement might glean from this is that once you are debt free, once you have positioned yourself in such a way as to be able to invest a lot, you've reduced your expenses and you're still working, I hope the takeaway from this is that if you continue on this FIRE path, if you start investing as much as possible, then you will be able to create some real wealth for yourself and you can live the lifestyle that you want that will make you happy without having to work yourself to death in order to fund it. It's really pretty simple, y'all. Reduce the expenses, increase the income, invest the difference, and you will reach financial independence. So I hope that y'all enjoyed this one as much as I did. I will link to this article in the description box below and I will put all of the rest of the Monday Mr. Money Mustache videos that I have done at the end of this one. Don't forget to leave me a like down below and let me know what you thought of this one. I'll catch y'all next Monday for the next episode. Bye guys.